welcome to see this video. And today's topic is about the DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. We will have a scenario, for example, lots of terminals want to visit the internet. The basic one is they have to get an IP address. If we have lots of terminals, we need a protocol to assign IP address automatically. And this protocol is DHCP. So if we want to deploy this protocol in our network, what's the key configuration, what's the principle, and uh, what's the key point we have to know when we deploy this technology. If you are interested, please follow us together to see the detailed video. Thank you. Hello guys. This video we will talk something about the DHCP principle. The same process before we talk about the detail, let's say the practice question about the last video. Which of the following description of STP interface status is incorrect? And the answer is option A. And about the option A, blocked interface do not listen and do not stand the BPDOs. Uh, maybe we already have the summary table for all the status of STP, right? Four status, blocking, listening, learning, and forwarding. And about the blocking interface, we will listen the BPDO. That means we will receive the BPDO because we have to receive the BPDO and according to the parameters, calculate the spanning tree to avoid the loop. But we not fold out the BPDO. We only receive. So this is the incorrect. And option B, C, and D of them are correct. And then let's say why we need the DHCP protocol. The first one, by basically in our network, if all the devices like the network devices of layer 3 switch, router, firewall, and also includes the terminal of the personal computer, your iPhone, your phone, something like this. All of the network need an IP address, need the mask, the gateway, and the other parameter like the DNS server, something like this. Then they can do the communication, for example, like the network connection test, and also maybe visit some applications like the Google website or YouTube website, something like this. So, how to assign IP address for the terminal? One way we can manually config, but in some scenario, if we have lots of terminals, like the wireless network, all the terminals, maybe we don't have the cable to connect with each other. And we will select the DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol. And we can centrally manage and allocate IP address to all the terminals. And uh, then they can get the parameter of IP address, gateway, DNS server, and other informations. Because this IP address is assigned by the central DHCP server, so there is no any problem of the IP address conflict. If you manually config, for example, this uh, today I will give the IP address is one 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 one, and the other one maybe think I also need to use the IP address of one 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 one. Because manually config these parameters, you can you cannot control everything. So this is the reason why we need the DHCP, right? All the terminal like the laptop, desk computers, cell phone, something like this. The basic parameter is an IP address. So how to get an IP address efficiently and securely without also with no perceived user experience? Right, like this picture. Maybe someone is go around and they will use a phone, maybe some network on the bus. So we hope they can get an IP address and don't need to do any operation. So in this scenario, we need the DHCP. 
Someone says the static way also can be config. For example, this is a picture. I use my Windows 11 to get an IP address manually. To choose the way manually, we have to configure IP address, configure the subnet mask, configure, configure the gateway, and also the DNS. Because now I know what's mean of IP address, what's mean of the subnet mask, what's mean of the gateway. But lots of terminal users cannot know. They don't know what's made of 192.168.101. Maybe you already ask them this parameter have to be this value, otherwise you cannot wait the internet. But someone still want to try the other values, maybe in your real network. So we hope that even all the users know this parameter should be this value or maybe they have to add the IP address of here, then they can get an IP address. Maybe we already have the training for the terminals, but there are still the other questions. For example, your network center maintains stuff still needs an IP to allocate which IP address for which terminals to record one by one, right? But in the real network, maybe one person have lots of terminals like the phone, like the laptop, maybe some iPad on, on the room, something like this. So the table will be very big. And in some scenario, maybe someone don't use this terminals again, but, but he don't told to the staff. So this IP address will be assigned for the terminal all the time. This also is a waste of IP address. And another one maybe users are likely to have IP address conflict, right? Because someone say, I already told you this IP address should be 192.168.1.1, but you give a wrong parameters. Maybe uh, I put the number so fast to make one to become 10, something like this. So there will be an IP address conflict. And the finally, they cannot use any resources. And then they will call you, please help me to solve the problem of the network. So we hope if the terminal or the users don't need to do so many conflict parameters but still can get an IP address and then to wait the internet, it's better for us, right? Also better for the users, we don't want to know, to know what's the meaning of the parameters. Also it's better for the maintenance because the terminal don't do the operations, there may be less wrong parameter. So in this scenario will help. There is a way can reduce the difficult for users to configure IP address. We also hope can reduce the workload of network center maintaining staff and also can avoid IP address conflict due to the misconfiguration. So we hope we can have this technology. And this is a basic function of the DHCP. About the DHCP, the full name is DHCP Dynamic Host Compu uh, Configuration Protocol. And uh, this is designed by the IFC 2131. And the structure is CS structure, C is client, S is server. And uh, the fun main function of the server is, respons is responsible for centralized management and the client will submit a configuration request. Please help me to give me an IP address, the mask, the DNS server, something like this. And then the server will give a reply if you are a correct and a legal client. And the DHCP message are encapsulated with the UDP because uh, as we know, the UDP only can provide the unreliable service. So maybe some DHCP message will be discarded when we transfer the message in the network. And the port number on the server is listening 
in on the 67 and the support number of the client is 68. Why we have to talk about the port number? That's because when you deploy the DHCP in your network and maybe someone will add some policy, place in the policy allows these two ports pass through. Otherwise, the message cannot be forwarded in the correct destination. This is a typical structure. There is a terminal and uh, in the media, maybe there are some network devices like the switch, and we also will deploy the server on our network. And about the PC, we'll ask, what is my IP address? Can you help me to assign one? And the protocol is used to encapsulate this requirement on the DHCP message, and then transfer on the link to the network devices, finally to wait to the DHCP server. Then the software will give a reply, this IP address you can use and what's the time list, something like this. So first, let's say the DHCP system com components at first. And there are three main rules in the DHCP, the client, the relay, and the server. The basic one is the DHCP client. The client means a host that needs to obtain an IP address dynamically. Maybe it's a personal computer. Maybe it's a pad. Maybe it's a personal phone. But everyone who want to get an IP address, these devices we can call is DHCP client. And who can help us to sign, assign IP address? This is DHCP server. The DHCP server can be a uh, Linux or maybe Windows hardware devices to make to become the server, or maybe some network devices like the router or the switch, who can assign IP address to client and also can manage this IP address. These devices we call is DHCP server. And between the client and the server, they will exchange lots of parameters built to the DHCP, then finally get an IP address or maybe release some IP address, something like this. But lots of parameters built to the broadcast message. That means the client and the server have to in the same broadcast domain. But in the real network, about the terminal, you really cannot directly to connect with the server. Otherwise, the server needs lots of ports to support the connect with the terminal. Maybe they will belong to different IP segment. In this scenario, we need a new devices. This one we call is DHCP relay. If the client and the server are not in the same subnet, they need the relay devices to help us for the DHCP request and reply packets. Usually in the network, the router or maybe layer 3 switch can be the DHCP relay. When we receive the message, the broadcast the DHCP message, I can transfer to become unicast and then to send the DHCP server. So there are main three components of the DHCP system. And then let's say the detailed process of the DHCP. First, let's say the basic process, only clients and the server, they located in the same network. First, the DHCP client maybe will send out the discovery message. Can someone allocate me an IP address? This is a broadcast message. That's why we say in some special scenario, we need the DHCP relay. Then the DHCP server will give a reply. I can allow IP address 192.168.1.2/24 to you. Of course, maybe there are also some gateway address, the DNS, a DNS server address, something like this. This message we call is DHCP offer. Maybe this is a broadcast message, maybe it's a unicast message. This depends on the real network, and we also can change the type. And then the client will broadcast the request message to the 
server again. Okay, I will use the IP address you allocate you allocated. And uh, in this scenario, maybe in the network we deploy lots of DHCP server, and the client only will apply for the first server he receives a message of DHCP offer. Then the DHCP server will give a acknowledgement. Also, maybe it's broadcast message, maybe it's unicast message. Okay, I acknowledge and uh, I will write down which mic address use which IP address. I will add into the DHCP bounding table. So this is a basic process. And here are four main types of DHCP message will be exchanged between the client and the DHCP server. Of course, you have to do the configuration on the server, and you also have to select the IP address way of the DHCP, then they will send out the message automatically. You don't need to do any encapsulation for the message. You only need to add the configuration, it's enough. Then let's see the detail first for the DHCP discover message. This message is the first request message sent by the PC, and this is the broadcast message. And the purpose is to find the DHCP server, right? Because now this is the first message of the client, and we don't know where is DHCP server and the DHCP server exists or not. So the destination MAC address and the destination IP address are broadcast. Like this one, I use a workshop to get the, pack, uh, get the message. Of course, you can use a workshop to, to get some message on, the, on your real network. And here you will find the source and the destination IP address and the destination MAC address, something like this. And the type is discover message because the DHCP is uh, uh, before DHCP protocol, we use the protocol is bootstrap. So the name also you get the message will say this is a bootstrap protocol. It doesn't matter. Okay, you will find Besides this one, all the client server, all the target IP will become zero because we don't know we don't know anything in our network. I only add my mic address on this message of the DHCP. And uh, there are some special operation options on the DHCP message. And option 55 will list the time place show me the subnet mask, the router, the DNS IP address, and the network time protocol server, something like this. This is the DHCP discover message. And the second one, when the server receives the discover from a client, I will give you a reply by using the offer. And this message is the first message returned by the DHCP server. Maybe in our network, they will deploy multiple DHCP server, right? Maybe. And the server only will keep the DHCP offer message received of the first one. And the DHCP offer will contain the IP address, gateway, lots of parameters. Like this one, click the offer and you will find what's your IP address, what's your server IP address, something like this. And here are the main options of everything. What's the subnet mask, what's the renewal time, something like this. And then the client also will send out the message we call is a DHCP request. And the second request message from the PC when we receive the offer from the DHCP server. And here is a request information and the parameters list. Then the DHCP server will give the reply acknowledgement. After we receive the request message from the PC, 
and I will record all the pieces information in our DHCP table and uh, select a special IP address for this client. So these are whole process for the basic exchangement between the client and the server. And the next step is about the IP address rejection and the release. For example, now the IP address already be used by the others and I refuse to use it because I received the message, the IP address information from the DHCP offer. I will do the test in order to avoid the IP address conflict. If I receive this someone may be already done, for example, I send out the ARP message, please tell me whose MIC address of 192.168.1.2 and someone gave me a reply, that means someone already used the IP address. So in this scenario, I will refuse to use it. And another one for the DHCP release, I don't want to use the address you allocate, please give it to someone else. For example, now you um, close your computer and uh, maybe you choose the other way to select a manually configured IP address. In this scenario, the DHCP client will send out a release message to the server. Now your IP address I don't want to use. Please add to the pool again. And if someone need, please assign allocate for the other guys. So there are two types of DHCP message. And the next process may be happened between the client and the server is the DHCP list renewal. For example, now I get an IP address from the server and the server will give the limitation how long time you can use this IP address. So if you want to use all the time up on 50% time of the list term, you have to send out the DHCP request message to the server. I would like to continue to use the IP address you allocate. Is that okay or not? Then the server will give, give a reply, okay, you can con continue to use it. But we say if the DHCP message is encapsulated into the UDP. So in the network, maybe this message will be discarded, will be lost because we don't have any acknowledgement uh, mechanism to make sure that the message can be sent to the server or not. So if we don't receive any reply from the server when the time is 50% of the last term, upon the 87.5% time of the last term, I will send the message to you again using the DHCP request. I would like to continue to use the IP address you allocate. Is okay or not? Then the server will give a reply. Okay, you can continue to use it. Or maybe I don't want I don't want you to use it anymore. I will give you the other message we call is NAK. No, you cannot continue to use. So this one this is the DHCP list renewal process. Mainly we will use the DHCP request from the client and the server will give the acknowledgement to sure you can use beyond to the ACK message. Maybe no, you cannot use beyond to the NAK message. So totally, there are lots of type message like the discover, offer, request, ACK, decline, release, something like this. And uh, here also list what's the applications, what's the scenario, they will use a message. And uh, also show you who will send the message out. Like the discover, the client will broadcast the message. But the offer ACK and the rest of the message belongs to the DHCP server. So this is the first part. We talk something basic principle of the DHCP process. 
uh, protocol, some DHCP rules. We have DHCP client, DHCP server, DHCP relay, something like this. And what different type between the client and the server and what's the function. And later we can see what's the key configuration of the DHCP.